Hi guys, I'm Max X. We are at the Mecca. It's the Del by Browser E. This is already the fourth episode, man. Yeah, it's already. the fourth episode on uh, on Jay's okay. channel. That's right. That's great. right. Time flies. So, yeah. so today what I wanted to do is I get a lot of questions about biceps. Obviously, it's a very showy muscle. People say, "Can I see you flex?" People flex the biceps. So, <laughs> uh, I just want to show you guys some just little tricks and tips uh, regarding training biceps, about hand positioning, about body positioning, uh, and about a way to keep the forearms out of the uh, out of the movement. Sometimes people have trouble with that. So, the first thing I'm going to show you today is a curl, uh, like a preacher curl, cable preacher curl. And I'm going to show you how to switch the bodies. You can work the outer bicep versus the inner bicep a little bit more just to give you uh, a different feel on the movement. Okay, guys. So what we're doing here is we're doing a preacher curl using a cable, as you can see. Great exercise for the biceps in general. But what I have Dave doing here is I have him angling his body and his shoulder in a position so that he's actually working a little bit more of the inner bicep fibers. Now, of course, I always reiterate that you cannot just isolate one part of a muscle. The whole muscle is contracting. But what we're doing by keeping this body and torso and elbow position is emphasizing a little bit more of the inner bicep. I'm going to have him switch positions now. His body is going to change angle. He's going to move straight into the bench. And now he's going to curl with his elbow tucked a little bit more towards the inner portion of his body. And what this does is it shifts the emphasis towards more of the outer portion of the bicep and the brachialis. Now you probably can't really see it as he's curling because the whole bicep is flexing, but this is just how the body works. When you switch positions like this, you just affect a different section of motor unit pools, and this way you can just make sure that you're getting the muscle from all positions and all angles for complete development. Okay, uh, one of the common complaints that I hear a lot of times from uh, people lifting weights and doing curls is that they get a better pump in their forearms than they get in their biceps. Uh, obviously, that's not what you want to do when you're doing curls. So I want to just show you a little trick on how you can remove much of the forearm from a curl and effectively target the biceps a lot better uh, and uh, give you a chance to grow in the biceps a lot better and keep the forearms out of the movement so you don't get that uncomfortable pump. Okay, so Dave here is just doing a standard barbell curl. And as you can see, his wrists are even with his forearm, and this is just generally how you do a barbell curl. The only problem is this does engage a lot of the forearm flexors, and sometimes it engages it to such a degree that you don't get a pump in the bicep, you just get in the forearm. So what I'm gonna have him do is actually drop his wrist back, and now you can see the difference the way he's curling. The wrist is down. Now what that does is it puts the forearm flexors in a stretch position, and this makes the biceps do the brunt of the work. So if you have a problem getting a pump in your forearms and you want to isolate the biceps better, try this little technique and you should get a much better pump directly in the biceps. Okay, so this tip uh, is for, you know, for guys who've been lifting for a few years and they're looking to, you know, hit the muscle in a unique way. So we're doing concentration curls with the dumbbell. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can switch uh, hand position on the dumbbell to force the dumbbell to tip one way or the other, which actually will affect different motor unit pools and muscle fibers within the biceps. Again, the whole bicep is going to contract, of course, but when you curl in different ways, what you're doing is you're maybe getting to muscle fibers that you've never gotten to before. So maybe you've been holding back your growth, uh, and now you can get some extra growth in the biceps by switching hand position. So Dave will show you how to do this on a concentration curl. Okay, so now Dave right now, as you can see, he's doing concentration curl normal position his hands right in the middle of the dumbbell this is how you generally would do them now I'm gonna have him shift his hand position to the outer portion of the dumbbell and as you could see that forces the dumbbell to tip inward this is going to affect the way the muscles working just a little bit differently and affect different muscle fibers and you can actually feel it when you're curling the difference now I'm gonna have him switch his hand position to the inner portion of the dumbbell so the dumbbell is now tipping the other way. And again, this is going to affect, again, unique muscle fibers in the muscle. So these are just little tricks and tips you can use to get a little bit more growth and a little of a unique feel into your bicep workout. So give it a shot the next time you do some curls. All right, Biggie. This is uh, Ask Merlin Monday. Again, I'm Bebel by Brother. So you got some good questions this week? 
Yeah, it's a little windy today, so hopefully you guys can hear me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not our fault. We can't control the wind. A little breezy, but uh, yeah, I have a few questions. Uh, the first question uh, was from my buddy Max, uh, my longtime client. He wanted to know um, what specific exercises could be used or how's the best way to, to uh, strengthen the tendons and the ligaments uh, specifically, which is a good question because that's not asked very often. So uh, basically the answer to that would be that most of the, the compound movements are best uh, for doing that, you know, squats, deadlifts, bench presses, uh, you know, multi-joint movements. But the key to strengthening the joints and the ligaments uh, is that it's best to use a partial range of motion on these movements, like the top of a bench press, uh, the top of a deadlift, the top of a squat, the top of a military press, because basically you can use more weight uh, and handling more weight will help to strengthen the tendons and the ligaments and you don't necessarily need to bring the muscle through a full range of motion. So this way you can go heavier, uh, to better strengthen the tendons and ligaments safely uh, and not do the full range of motion. So partial movements uh, in the compound exercises is the best way to strengthen the tendons and the ligaments. Oh, good. Next question was about the keto diet. Uh, a lot of people ask about that and they want to know, I was just basically asked what's, what's my good versus bad in terms of the keto diet and you know basically there's nothing really inherently wrong with the keto diet, but it really depends on how you use it and why you're using it. It's, it's a good diet for, I think, for people who need to lose a lot of weight. And that's basically where they're coming from. If they're very, very overweight and they're unhealthy and they need to drop a lot of weight quickly, it's a pretty simple uh, plan uh, for losing weight, for losing body fat pretty quickly. Uh, for most people, it's pretty satisfying because ketones help to uh, keep the appetite down. But it's, it's not a long-term solution. You know, it's good for the short term to get a lot of weight off quickly, uh, but it's not a diet that I think you want to use for years at a time. I think that after an initial uh, period of using the keto diet, you should go to a more traditional balanced diet, but it is a good way to lose weight fast. Now, when you're talking about somebody who's looking to, you know, build and maintain muscle, I don't think it's a good diet at all. Uh, carbohydrates are needed uh, in the diet. Uh, when you're looking to build muscle, especially because carbohydrates help you to release insulin, and insulin is one of the most anabolic hormones in the body. Uh, so especially the key times are in the morning uh, and after training when you really want to have your insulin levels a little higher to store carbohydrates, amino acids, uh, refill glycogen stores. Uh, so it's much, much uh, better to use a balanced diet when you're building muscle. Now, some people might say, hey, but you know, you can't control growth hormone uh, when carbohydrates are high. Well, the thing is that you really want to have higher growth hormone while you're training. So you can actually take carbs out and just use protein and fats before you train. And also before you go to sleep, when you have a nice growth hormone spike, uh, you don't need to have carbohydrates either. So really, it's about timing the carbohydrates correctly. So keto diet, good on the short term for losing body fat and weight, but not good for the long term and not good for bodybuilders looking to add muscle mass. Last question for the day, as I was asked, if I had to pick one exercise to build the forearms, what would that be? That's a tough one because... <laughs> Who asked you that, Max again? <laughs> no, 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 somebody else asked me. Uh, his name is Dave Cook, he asked me a lot of questions and that would, that's what he wanted to know. Uh, I mean, if I had to pick just one exercise, if I was forced to, I'd probably say hammer curls would be my favorite. Mm. Uh, I think that builds uh, the, the portion of the forearms, the brachioradialis, uh, that gives it a lot of, you know, that thickness up towards the elbow. But, you know, I, I really say you'd want to have one movement to build the forearm flexors and one to build the extensors. So you'd want to have some type of a wrist curl to, to build the flexors, whether it be behind the back or uh, wrist curls off of a bench. And then to build the forearm, forearm flexors and the brachioradialis would need to be hammer curls or reverse curls. So it's hard for me to pick just one. And listen, if you're in a gym and you have barbells and dumbbells, there's no reason to pick just one, is there? Mm. Um, but if you just had one exercise to do and you were forced to do it that way, hammer curls is probably my personal favorite. So. Boom. All right, Big E. So we're done with the Ask Run on Monday. Thanks a lot. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh. Fuck all this bullshit. <laughs> right, let me tell you something, man. Camera hard. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something. Big Will, this buddy. is the motherfucker right here. Plain and simple. <laughs> I, I started working with this man, and you uh, got something to come up to. Oh, I ain't hold on, hold on. I, 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 no, 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 no. I ain't cool. telling you what's up. I ain't telling you what's you up. You just said what's up. I, I just gave you a little insight. A little insight on what's to come. Guys, he's sitting on me. And I'm going to tell you, at 3.05, I got something coming for your ass. That's it. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and on this, we are out for today, Biggie. Later.